having started. In this session, we will take a look at craters and uh, their origins and some of their some of their properties. When we look at our moon in the sky, uh, it looks like a grayish white globe that's there. It, uh, with some magnification, it obviously looks a little darker in place than others. The darker places on the moon uh, were first uh, called seas, like an ocean, like an ocean. And they have been since named, or the last area, Mare is one, Mare is multiple ones. These regions on the moon that are very full of very dark rock. We see uh, other places that are very light, but they all are generally circular in shape. And at uh, first, um, scientists were not exactly sure of their origin, whether they were volcanic in nature or whether they were perhaps from an impact. And when astronauts first went to the moon and got some close-up looks at these craters and noticed how numerous they were, uh, the larger craters, uh, smaller ones yet, and even smaller ones. And uh, these craters are many miles across, the larger ones are, and even down to craters are um, microscopic in size. We really weren't quite sure what they were, but yet still there was some comparisons made even before we went to the moon with bomb craters. Craters made when a bomb is dropped and it explodes tended to resemble what we were seeing when we looked at craters on the moon. And these two types of craters, one made from explosion of a human-made object and one made from a collision with something from outer space, resembled each other. And here are the properties that we see when we look at craters that are made, that are impact. We have a, a simple type of crater and one slightly more complex. Let's look at the simple crater. Notice that it is depressed, it is lower and the land around it. It has its edge that is known as the rim is up higher than the surrounding area. So we think that when the object impacts, it pushes down and outward so that we result with a depression with an edge or rim, and of course it's circular all the way around, that happens to be raised. The ground beneath the impact is shattered and fractured, and other rock is tossed outward on the outside. And this is sometimes referred to as ejecta, material that has been ejected outside the impact area. And the, these objects can, this can be dust, or this can uh, be uh, large blocks. And inside, the temperatures are very, very high, um, and some of, uh, during this impact, uh, and you get uh, melted uh, rock, rock that's melted together. And you get rock that is broken and it's hot. And sometimes it glues together with other hot uh, rock from this impact. 
and it is referred to as brecciated or breccia. Breccia is another pronunciation of this. Uh, so this is what a simple crater tends to look like, a, a depression, a raised rim uh, material that's fractured and broken and melted inside, and material that's tossed outward on the edge. The co more complex crater re resembles the simple crater, uh, except for a couple of other a couple of other items. You get a lot of ejecta, and you tend to get a reflection or a bounce back or a rebound of the center of the impact. Um, and this is referred to as a central peak, a little mountain that tends in the center of the crater. And um, it shows there, it's, at first thought, it could be that the uh, meteor that impacted uh, actually be stuck there, and that was some of the early ideas of that. Plus, the ejected material sometimes ends up in terraces uh, on the outside, and in some cases, the fractured rock is fractured so deeply, it allows lava to fill in on the inside of the crater, uh, and this is where we get the sea-like feature, the mare feature. So those dark features on the moon are usually associated with impact craters. Uh, lava has flown up into the through the bottom of those craters, filled them in, um, and you get the dark circular regions. In some cases, the rim has not been high enough, and the lava has spilled out over the edge and filled in other regions on on the moon. So the simple craters and the craters that are a little more complex. The craters with central peaks do not always have lava in them, but uh, hardened lava. Uh, it's cooled now into bolt that rock that you get when lava uh, when, when lava uh, cools and hardens. So here is an example of a very simple crater. Uh, notice that we have a nice sharp rim and uh, no central peak, uh, no terraces, quite simple. Uh, and notice the ejecta. And notice it's a light, lighter colored material out um, around uh, this uh, around this crater. So we we have this large, simple crater. Notice that we have other craters that are here as well. One, one of the features that you can take a look at is. Where is the crater relative to the other craters? Let's go back to the one of the earlier pictures that we shown. So here, here, notice that we have a complex crater. has a central peak in it. Uh, you can see its rims with the terraces, the kind of the steps that go up. Some of the material doesn't quite make it out, and uh, we get we get this feature. But we also have this on its rim. We have this simple crater. So. If you look at craters on top of craters, the larger complex crater was likely uh, what was formed first by an impact, and then we had an impact that came down and hit on the near the rim of this crater. Plus, notice we have craters on the inside. Obviously, they occurred later. Uh, these collisions and uh, tend to rub out anything that is there. So this little crater would not have been formed first; it had been formed after the complex crater the same way with uh, the one the two that are on the outside so you get tend to get these craters over overlapping craters uh, another complex crater we'll look at with a with a central peak that happens to happens to be in it uh, showing terraces uh, showing uh, the different uh, the, the different features that we previously described. Here is our uh, simple crater, nice and sharp, no peak, no terracing in it, and then a crater that is more complex. Uh, notice uh, the complex the complex here, the 
the crater rim. It's raised above the surrounding area, the central peak, the stepping, uh, and notice then the material that's tossed out. Sometimes this material causes other little small craters as the material is tossed outward. And then we have craters that were formed afterwards. Here's a nice simple crater um, out in the ejecta blanket uh, that was formed after, uh, after the major complex crater uh, was, uh, was, was created, was formed after its impact. So by looking at the relative spacing of craters, uh, which one was first, which one was second, it gives scientists an opportunity to estimate, uh, to estimate ages. As we then get larger and larger craters, we get to uh, this, this basin that's on the moon that's called Imbrium. It is actually the largest impact feature on the moon. Uh, the impact feature was somewhere in here. Uh, it's about 700 miles across. And we can see other craters that are here as well. Uh, notice no central peak in this because the lava filled up, uh, came and filled up the crater and actually spilled over the edges uh, to get uh, other uh, places on the moon covered by lava that has since hardened and cooled, appears darker uh, in, the, in the basalt, uh, with, with the basaltic rock. And then we have craters that have of the lava flows. There's one just south of uh, Imbrium, um, a very fit because there are, there's an assignment there that I don't want to name too many craters because you, you I don't want to take that out of that out of your repertoire out of your list that you could that you could get. So we get these larger basins, larger impacts, uh, and the impact is really caused by the kinetic energy of the object. Kinetic energy, um, a physicist will tell you that the kinetic energy is measured as one half times the mass, times the velocity squared. So you could have a very large object moving very slowly or a very small object moving very rapidly that could give you the same size crater, the kinetic energy. So large objects and small objects, um, they can create the same size crater depending upon their velocities. And likely Imbrium was, uh, was done by a, assuming that all of these objects in the inner solar system are moving at about the same speed, had to be a relatively large object uh, that, uh, that formed that particular feature. Here's a good cross-section showing these basins uh, with their uh, raised rims, the ejecta blanket, uh, the maria, uh, the lava that gets uh, that gets filled into, uh, into those uh, depressed features uh, from lava flowing into them uh, very gently, of course, uh, and uh, there is some other evidence of uh, some volcanic activity on the moon, but probably not to a large degree. This uh, is from Apollo 15, a video that you'll watch. This is called a rill. This is the landing site area. This thing that looks somewhat like a river uh, is suspected to be um, a lava flow, whether it was on the surface or a lava tube beneath the surface that collapsed, uh, this uh, snaking uh, line in the ground, crack in the ground canyon, uh, is called Hadley Rill, and it is from suspected to be lava. So not only do we see impact craters on the moon, uh, we're also going to see some other features on the moon and other planets. But generally, without erosion, without plate tectonics, we end up with 
moon-like looking objects. So as we go through the solar system, we're going to look first for the impact craters, whether we have impact craters there. And if they're not there, what may have erased those craters? The moon has many, many, many craters. Earth does not have so many from erosion of wind and water and from plate tectonics. We, we don't have the densities. We don't have the numbers. There is a, a, a crater that I want to point out to you because not only do we get the rilled features, but we get some features of dust that's been scattered uh, great distances across the moon. For reference purposes, uh, this happens to be the Imbrium Basin. Way south of the Imbrium Basin uh, is this feature, uh, is this crater I want to point out here. I'm not going to name it, uh, but I'm going to uh, point it out to you so that you could, you could possibly use this crater um, if, you, if you name it uh, later in the exercise. This particular crater is very bright, uh, so I think it's not old. It's millions of years old, uh, not days old or years old as we might, uh, might think it to be. But this crater is associated with some very long streaks of ejected uh, And these ejected material is referred to as rays. Yeah, this ray of dust. Likely, if you were standing in it, you wouldn't know you were, but from a distance, you can see uh, rays from this crater. Here's another crater uh, just south of Imbrium it's in the other picture, and you can see its ejecta blanket, and another one here where it has formed on top of the maria and has spread about uh, some dust that's lighter and in some cases has uh, rays, uh, lines of dust that are tossed out from the, from the impact. So the rays of this crater go long, long distances uh, across the moon and indicate that it's younger uh, in comparison to some of those other features that are on the moon. And when astronauts went there, uh, there was some uncertainty about how deep all of this dust might be whether the spacecraft, when it landed, would sink in, uh, or even the astronauts would sink in. And so in this picture, you can see that the dust layer uh, is commonly referred to as the regolith. The regolith on the moon, the dust on the moon, uh, is from all of these fractured meteorites and the fractured ground that's been tossed about. Um, and... Uh, the dust itself, the dust layer on top, is uh, a few inches deep, as indicated by the footprint left by the astronaut uh, walking on the moon. Unsure, we were unsure how deep it was, and also unsure whether when the astronauts went back into the spacecraft and repressurized it with oxygen, whether there might be a rapid... discussions that occurred among scientists about how deep that dust was uh, from all of the fractures of meteorites and um, whether it was reactive to oxygen. Back on Earth, the most famous crater on North America is known as Meteor Crater. It's in northern Arizona. It's approximately a mile across. Uh, probably an object that was uh, about the size of a small building uh, hit it and left this half mile or so uh, wide off the ground. Notice it is not perfectly cir circular like you would expect on the moon. And even though while northern Arizona has some uh, moisture and some rain, you can see some erosion where water runs down in it, and we certainly don't see this in the um, craters that we see on the moon. So this is Meteor Crater from an impact. At one time, the individual who first bought the property 
crater, the meteor was stuck, or the meteorite, rather, was lodged down there in the middle and went out to mine it in the center. He thought he could get rich mining the the, the uh, object that hit the earth and sell the sell the materials. Um, he never found it. Of course, because these things are fractured and they are tossed tossed outwardly, of course, in the in the ejecta um, and fractured and, and sent sent outward. A meteor crater uh, looks like a simple crater, except it's somewhat squared rather than round. It has a raised rim, not significantly raised, but uh, a few feet uh, raised up, and um, it is depressed. So it shows pretty much a simple uh, impact crater's character. And by the way, you can visit Meteor Crater. It is not far. There's a visitor center not far from um, Interstate 40 uh, to the east of um, Flagstaff, Arizona. It is where the Meteor Crater happens to be. It's on private lands, on private property, um, and a small admission fee will allow you to walk up and walk, uh, look over and uh, has also a small museum. So we have craters on Earth. Not as many uh, as craters on the moon. And by the way, I also have an extra credit opportunity for someone who wants to to try this. I, I have a listing of all of the uh, craters that happen to be in North America. Some of them are not very obvious, uh, but where we think impact have occurred. And I'd like someone to plot that on Google Map uh, for extra credit and to show us where all of the craters are that happen to be in North America is a job uh, to do that and could significantly raise a grade, a, a grade likely, uh, one full grade. Uh, properties that we can see, we are quite certain they're from impacts, not from not volcanic. Their characteristics and the complex craters. Uh, have their characteristics, and they are likely associated also with some of the maria as we get bigger, the basins uh, above about five to 600 miles in size, uh, such as the Imbrium impact, which is the largest one happening, happening on the moon. 